Hello, I am Louise Keller at Roper, the CEO of Volans. We at Volans have the privilege of working with some of the most forward thinking leaders to make sense of the changes coming and to actively work to shift the system. And this year, our Tomorrow's Capitalism Forum 2021 honed in on the financial system and the intersection and interactions between finance and other actors like business and government. This is the highlights reel. I hope you enjoy it. We had a lot of good feedback on the day and um, I wanted to thank all our speakers, my co-hosts, um, Richard Roberts and John Elkington and the Volans team in the background who made sure everything moved smoothly for one of these virtual conferences. Also, a thank you to all the attendees. We had amazing questions and we're following up with everybody um, to answer all questions. Well, I hope you enjoy it and I hope you feel compelled to step up in the way you can and, and help us act now. I first joined the industry, if you like, working at WWF, looking at its own investment reserves. We all dreamt then of a future in which finance ministers and central bank governors and the C-suite of every large financial institution in the world would take sustainability issues seriously. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to say we've yet got there, but we very, we're very close to. Almost everyone is pretending, at least, to care. Now, that shift is huge. It's mm -hmm. not fast enough, it's not far enough, but it is huge. And if you think about the parabolic curve of change that we've seen even in the last three years, the last six months, post the US election, it's just been wonderful to behold. There's been a number of you know, really ambitious uh, commitments to uh, fully integrate climate risk into the financial sector, uh, which of course is not sufficient. I mean, it's, it's important, but it's essential that, that that is the first step to then uh, ensuring that the financial sector is then geared towards investing for positive impact uh, and addressing the climate crisis as well as uh, other sustainable development objectives. Activist hedge funds are the, the sort of single biggest threat in financial markets to CEOs who waste shareholder capital. There's a great wall between investors sitting in their office and CEOs sitting in their office with shareholder capital. And we know, you know many theories, many studies showing that um, managers can go astray. And so activist hedge funds uh, can sort of keep CEOs eyes and managers eyes on the ball. I think the world has, um, you know, from a generation investment management perspective has um, sort of, you know, got to a point where the questions are starting to be asked about the effectiveness of ESG and sustainable investing in delivering impact at scale. Science, dictates the challenge. And I think we need to ask ourselves collectively in the investment community, are we truly set up to help deliver the impact? The UN talk a lot about a two to four trillion a year climate finance gap. I think that money is there. I just think that the way it is being deployed and the mandates and the, the targets that are being set around that capital deployment um, will not deliver the necessary impact. So I think we're now at a point where we, we need to institutionalize the idea of allocating for purpose, not just for optimizing risk of return. We only have about sort of six, seven years of carbon budget left. We have to address this really urgently and we have to gonna get things moved around. But we know that financial stability is going to be undermined by climate change if we don't have a world that will support human population on earth but we don't know exactly know where the risks will be and the central bank is sort of um sort of predisposition is well let's try and model it model it all and understand it and build the evidence base um i mean in a way in terms of the carbon budget we're kind of we're seeing this fill up a little bit like water filling up in a bath and it's close to the to the rim and and overflowing and it's almost this image of well then the, the central bank will still be measuring it as it's as it's all spilling onto the floor what's really required is the precautionary approach i think the european taxonomy is possibly the milestone the most important milestone in the past a few in the past decade in uh, homogenizing what it is to um, to be 
um, socially and environmentally, particularly environmentally in the, in the case of the taxonomy, uh, positive uh, mm-hmm. or at least neutral. We, we contributed to, the, to developing the taxonomy mechanism and the standards, and then we were the first company to analyze all of our activities from that point of view. We came up with, I guess it was 93% of our EBITDA being taxonomy compliant um, and uh, 80 something percent of our sales. Qualifying at those levels uh, was uh, not easy. Now it's a process, we need to improve ourselves. What the taxonomy gives you, which is the most important, is the sensitivity to know what you're doing and how, and, and give you the, the focus to try and solve it. We're essentially targeting one of the ECB's quantitative easing programs. Um, so this is where they buy up bonds from um, companies. Uh, it's the corporate bond purchase program. And there, there's a huge amount of money that central banks are pumping into these largely fossil fuel and carbon intensive companies because there's a bias in the program towards those sort of companies. And in the ECB's case, it's about 300 billion euros worth. Um, And the effect of that program is that it essentially enables eligible companies to get cheaper financing. So they can issue bonds to raise funds at lower interest rates than they otherwise could. So the program just facilitates those companies to continue to exacerbate climate change through their operations with no climate related conditions attached. One bit of feedback we are getting is that mass consumer engagement, so getting a whole bunch of people to write to the banks, gets escalated very, very quickly um, up to the bank's board because it's it's really important to them from a reputational standpoint. And the more people you do ultimately get moving away, the less Mm -hmm. capital they have to lend out. There's actually a really big problem, which is that the real end investors are actually totally incentivized to take the long-term perspective where we get the big win-wins, um, but where we might have some short-term costs. But a lot of the agents in the system in financial markets um, aren't looking at it that way. So um, these, are, these are really tricky systemic challenges. There's a lot of herd mentality in, in, in the capital markets, and that's been a, a break on sustainability for a long time. But I think we're maybe reaching a bit of a tipping point in a good way, where the herd might really start chasing this. There's also a big opportunity, I think, for business leaders that can craft the story in a credible way and and take people with them, because there's huge weight of interest in sustainable investing now. So if if you've got a credible story, why wouldn't you attract capital? At the beginning, when we did the transformation, not everybody was applauding of what we were doing. And yes, I mean, lots of investors left us, were difficult periods of time. But it's also a bit, I mean, up to the management, I mean, to make sure that you have the right portfolio of investors that look at it, I mean, from a long term and that you also deliver yeah, on what you're saying. The 90% of the questions that I'm getting in the discussion is around um, the strategic positioning and the hurdles that we have in implementation of our strategy yeah, and regulation, of course, which is an important part of it. If you talk about greenhouse gas emission reductions, I mean, there's so much opportunities yeah, that actually, if I bring it back to our company, it's more about making the right choices yeah, uh, because there are so many opportunities. If you look at, at uh, our strategy a few years ago, all our indicators were about uh, billions of reais, billions of dollars, disbursement in financial metrics. What we are doing now is trying to reverse from this one dimension financial metric into impact uh, metrics. And uh, it, it's a long term job. It's not, it's not a quick job because we need to translate uh, the strategy of the bank into the what we call the non-financial metrics or the non-financial impact, uh, change that in the structure of the bank, and more important, in the mindset of the people that are working here for 20, 30, 40 years in a different one-dimension uh, uh, approach. The biggest question we all need to be ask, asking ourselves is how do you harness markets to delivering a smooth and just transition to net zero by 2050. You harness the international financial architecture, that needs the G20 to tell everything within that architecture to change what they're doing and make it it fit for the challenge of this century.